Hi there, welcome along to a video on the Big Bang. Um, really great bit of physics here. Um, Going to give you some time out to do some calculations and stuff, but um, hopefully some, some really interesting bits and pieces going on here. So this work really follows on from the work we've been doing, doing at Doppler. Um, it then follows on to look at um, a couple of other bits of evidence to give us a total of three pieces of evidence um, for the Big Bang. I'm not going to go through kind of a list now because some of them I want to sort of try and kind of do a bit of a reveal as we go along. But the, the start of this is the idea that we've got Hubble. He's got a really great telescope. He's looking at galaxies. He's taking the spectrum of galaxies and he's using the um, Doppler measurements to decide whether a galaxy is moving away or coming towards him and work out the speed of it. And the units here are going to kind of be important and prove to be problematic. But the standard unit for the speed of a receding galaxy is kilometres per second. He would also measure the distance to the galaxies. That's actually far harder than it is doing the Doppler. We've just got to find an absorption line. But he had a system for working out distances to galaxies. And there are kind of two standout things he discovered from the first 150 galaxies that he looked at. One was that every galaxy was um, moving away from him. The other was that the further away a galaxy was, the faster it was moving. So the other um, axis here is the distance to the galaxy, and that's in mega parsecs. Now, we have to be a bit careful here because... Um, when this gets made into um, an equation, we're going to discover that um, we've got an equation with um, two non-SI units, both kilometres per second and megaparsecs. So what he discovers is those two things are directly proportional. The, the velocity of recession of a galaxy, the velocity moving away, is proportional to the distance to that galaxy. Um, so we need to just pause about that and, and tell us what see what that seems to be telling us about the universe. It, it's one of those um, observations that, if you're not careful, seems to suggest something very special about our place in the universe. Why is it that everything's um, moving away from us? So let's kind of imagine that we've got um, the universe, the two-dimensional universe, is, is a rubber sheet, a, a sheet that can be stretched. So then, let me just grab some pens. We can imagine this is our galaxy. Okay. And then also on the rubber sheet are other galaxies. Let me draw some elliptical galaxies to save time. And these galaxies are also existing on the rubber sheet. And what's happening is when we imagine the universe expanding, what we're literally doing is we're adding space. So we're pulling on every edge of the sheet simultaneously. And as a result, kind of the area of the sheet, every linear dimension of the sheet increases. So if we imagine being here, from sat here on the rubber sheet, it looks like this is moving away, that's moving away. But this appears to be moving away faster than that, simply because there's more rubber in between. So if there's a 10% expansion, there's a greater change in the distance. Of course, it's nothing special about being there on the rubber sheet. If you were here on the rubber sheet, all these would appear to be moving away as well. Um, so wherever you are in an expanding universe, everything appears to be moving away from you. And everything appears to be moving away from away from you. And the further away it is, the faster it appears to be moving away. Um, and there we've got very neatly this graph. And this is Hubble's law. So it was our first piece of evidence for the Big Bang. It's not on its own um, enough to really support the Big Bang theory. But if we get um, a proportional relationship like that, we know, don't we, that there must be um, an equation linking the two things. So we say V is equal to HD. The velocity of recession of a galaxy is equal to the Hubble constant times by the distance to that galaxy. This is in kilometers per second. This is in mega parsecs. But that gives these um, Hubble constant these awkward units. It's kilometers per second per mega parsec. Now, one of the things we can use the Hubble 
the Hubble constant for is assuming the universe is expanded at a constant rate, assuming this rubber sheet is in expanding at a constant rate, we should now be able to calculate an age for the universe. And we can do that by considering any two points in the universe. I think it's easier to consider this, easiest to consider two points that are separated by exactly one meter. Um, we know we can then work out how fast from this equation that point is moving away from that point due to the addition of space in between. And if we know that the rate of expansion in the universe has been constant, we can then work out, well, how how long ago, how much time was it ago that these two points were touching? Of course, at the time when those point, two points were touching, at that moment, we were at the beginning of the universe. So we need a value for the Hubble constant. There are various values, but the one that AQI have settled, settled on is 65 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So we want to know how far away, how fast these two points are moving apart. So it's um, the velocity apart in kilometers per second is 65 times by the distance in megaparsecs. Uh, the distance in me megaparsecs is one meter divided by what, by what me one megaparsec is. So a parsec uh, on the data sheet is 3.08 times 10 to the 16 meters. Obviously, a megaparsec is 10 to the 6 times that. So if you have a little bit of a pause there, you can have a go working out that velocity, and then you can see if you can figure out the age of the universe. Right, assuming you've had a go, you can now check my working. So the velocity is going to be 65 on the top um, and then on the bottom we've got uh, 3.08 x 16 times 1 x 6 equals so it's out they're only moving apart at 2.11 times 10 to the minus 21 uh, kilometers per second obviously it'd be faster than meters per second it'd be a thousand times faster so let's just multiply that up so they're moving apart at 2.11 times 10 to the minus 18 meters per second so we now know that our universe contains two points and that if that one's stationary that one's moving away at 2.11 times 10 to the minus 18 meters per second so we can now find the age of the universe can't we because we know that speed equals distance over time. So time is equal to distance over speed. So there's a distance of one meter over 2.11 times 10 to the minus 18. Let's just do uh, one, 2.11 x minus 18. Gives us an age of the universe of 4.739 times 10 to the 17 seconds. That's a bit, bit meaningless. So let's quickly convert that uh, into years. So let's divide that by 365 times 24 times 60 times 60, close bracket equals. And that gives an age of the universe of 1.5 times 10 to the 10 years, which is 15 billion years. And you sometimes see written in books that the um, age of the universe is one over the Hubble constant, uh, assuming the rate of expansion has been constant. But of course, it's only one over the Hubble constant in SI units, not in these awkward units. So that's piece of evidence one. Let's have now have a look at piece of evidence two. I'll present this initially kind of in the form of a little puzzle. Um, I'll have attached this, I'll have sent this uh, sheet out to you, or you can pause and have a look at it. So we've got some radiation that was discovered. It was originally discovered by some telephone engineers. They put a big microwave receiver, and wherever they pointed it, they got this kind of low hum, this sort of um, this signal. And this is a, an accurate modern plot of how the intensity varies with wavelength. So I've got some questions here for you. Um, 
So if you wanted to, you, you could probably get through these questions on your own. So have a look at them, maybe pause them on the screen and you might have to shuffle backwards and forwards between the two shots or as I say, use the printed version. Let's see if you can see if you can figure this out. Right, you either haven't paused or you're back because you figured it all out. What sort of radiation does the above graph, graph, above graph look like? Well, we get these curves which are steeper on the left, less steep on the right. Um, relating wavelength and intensity, this looks like a black body radiation curve. So it looks like it was made by a hot object. And we can use Wine's displacement law um, to estimate the temperature. So we get a... I bet you haven't got a set square. You're going to get a really annoyed, John. So that's kind of around 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3 meters for the peak wavelength. Um, Wine's law is lambda max t is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So uh, 0.8 times 10 to the minus 3 t is 2.9 times 10 to the minus um, 3. So in fact, we can um, cancel that out and we get 2.9 divided by 0.8, which is going to give us a slightly larger answer than the accepted answer. Never mind, 2.9 divided 0.8. Okay, it shows this very low temperature, 3.6 kelvins. Uh, you may have got a slightly different answer on the peak. The generally accepted answer is that the, that the black body temperature of the universe is 2.7 kelvins when this radiation was produced it would have had a much shorter wavelength what processes increase the wavelength of the radiation so thinking about what we've just looked at the expansion of the universe has uh, increased the wavelength of this radiation as it traveled across the universe um, so it's been it's the big bang it's sorry not the big bang it's the universal expansion as described by hubble's law that has increased the wavelength of this so if it's increased the wavelength then when it was made it was a shorter wavelength it was a shorter wavelength it was a higher temperature so that suggests that the object the events that created this radiation was uh, had temperature much higher than 2.7 kelvins um this radiation is the same from every direction in the universe. What's the only event that can have affected everywhere at the same time? Every, and the answer is it's the Big Bang. If the Big Bang occurred at a single point in the universe and that point has expanded to everywhere, the only thing that can be have been everywhere is the Big Bang. So the radiation um, in the graph above is the heat radiation from the Big Bang, or more specifically... It's the heat radiation from when the big the universe had cooled to the point where it became transparent to radiation. So we're now up to two crucial pieces of evidence for the Big Bang. And this makes this is really what tipped the corner from it being kind of an obscure scientific thing theory to being one which was much more mainstream. Is not only do we know the universe is expanding it, we, we know that it had a very hot past as well. That just leads us on to one final piece of evidence um, for the Big Bang. We, we know now that the universe is made of a wide range of elements, but we're relatively confident that apart from hydrogen and helium, all the um, elements currently in the universe can be accounted for by being made in stars. So we've got this idea, we've got this, this point, um, very, very hot, very dense. It's expanding outwards and it expands outwards, it cools. And eventually it cools to the point where kind of the quarks and stuff can cool and form neutrons and protons, but certainly protons. Um, we've got, um, we're imagine, imagining there are electrons. Uh, and then these um, particles can start colliding with each other, the protons collide, and, and that might cause some fusing to cause helium. And we reckon that um, the Big Bang would have created a universe which was about one quarter, 25% helium, there are sophisticated mathematical models to back this up and 75 percent hydrogen and if we unwind the work of the stars we think about how much of each element each star would have produced and how many stars there are we're fairly confident 
that the universe was made as 25% uh, helium and 75% hydrogen. So that, and that fits exactly with our models. So there are three pieces of evidence for the Big Bang. We've got Hubble's law indicating universal expansion. We've got black body radiation and the expected black body radiation curve of the Big Bang exactly fits with the observed. So we've got cosmic microwave background. And then finally, we've got the relative abundance of helium and hydrogen, uh, the helium being produced in a, um, a, a period of fusion before the universe called to the point where that wasn't possible. I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much.